antineutrophilic cytoplasmic antibody associated vasculitis or ANCA associated vasculitis for short is a type of vasculitis that affects small blood vessels and they include three diseases and are characterized by the presence of the ANCA antibodies. These three conditions are granulomatosis with polyangitis, microscopic polyangitis, and eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis. Some of these can lead to a complication called ANCA nephritis or ANCA associated glomerular nephritis. There are two types of antibodies found in ANCA. These include the P ANCA, which are antibodies directed against neutrophil enzyme myeloperoxidase. The P is for perinuclear. And then the second antibody is C ANCA, the C for cytoplasmic. And these antibodies are directed against the neutrophil proteinase 3. ANCA may play a direct role in vessel damage by hyperactivating already primed neutrophils, leading to vessel endothelial inflammation and damage. The presence of granular... In this video, we're going to mainly focus on granulomatosis with polyangitis, also known as Wegner's syndrome. And Wegner's syndrome is the most common ANCA associated vasculitis and more than 95% of patients are ANCA positive against proteinase 3. It is a small vessel vasculitis characterized by inflammation of the small blood vessels with infiltration of immune cells forming granulomas. The granulomas are formed by T cells and other immune cells. Granulomatous inflammation occurs in the blood vessels of the upper respiratory tract, lower respiratory tract, and kidneys in granulomatosis with polyangitis. And this is the Wegner's triad, upper respiratory tract, lower respiratory tract, and renal tract involvement. Granulomatosis with polyangitis is the most prevalent of the ANCA-associated vasculitis with a mean age of onset of 40 but really can occur at any age. It occurs in females and males equally. Histopathological findings include granuloma formation as mentioned, but also palsy immune necrotizing vasculitis of the small arteries and also the small veins. Clinical features include the nonspecific arthralgia, fevers, cough, weight loss. Then you have granulomatosis with polyangitis triad involving the upper and lower respiratory tracts and kidneys. Upper respiratory tract findings are often severe and include paranasal sinus pain and drainage and purulent or bloody nasal discharge. Nasal septal perforation may follow, leading to saddle nose deformity, a buzzword to remember. Serous otitis media may occur as a result of eustachian tube blockage. Subglottic tracheal stenosis resulting from active disease or scarring can occur. From these findings, it is evident that the upper airway findings does not necessarily only involve the blood vessels, rather inflammation and also granuloma formation in the upper respiratory tract. The lower respiratory tract findings include pulmonary infiltrates, pulmonary nodule formation, hemoptysis from vasculitis and pleuritis. The lower respiratory tract findings can be observed with imaging, and this is done with a chest x-ray or a CT chest. There are also eye findings in this condition. Granulomatosis lesions may obstruct the nasolacrimal duct causing dacrocystitis and conjunctivitis. Granulomatous vasculitis of the kidneys results in glomerulonephritis, and this is characterized by renal impairment and hematuria. Investigations to order for suspected ANCA-associated vasculitis include the ANCA, the actual anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibody, full blood count, EUCs, ESR, and CRP to assess inflammation, urinary costs for glomerulonephritis, a chest x-ray or CT chest to look for lower respiratory tract involvement as mentioned. 
more than 95% of patients are ANCA positive and majority of antibodies are directed against proteinase 3. Remember, the absolute height of the antibody titer does not correlate with disease activity. You can have a very high ANCA level in the blood, but low disease activity and vice versa. Diagnosis of granulomatosis with polyangitis or with any ANCA associated vasculitis is a biopsy. And the biopsy is usually of the skin or the kidneys, not so the lung. The skin with the rash will show accumulation of neutrophils in the vessels, termed leukocytoclastic vasculitis, with little or no complement and immunoglobulins there. Here is a biopsy of the skin showing the classic leukocytoclastic vasculitis, the accumulation of neutrophils in the vessels and surrounding area. Granulomatosis with polyangitis is an anchor associated glomerulonephritis. It can lead to rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, which is where you have a rapid decline in glomerular filtration rate over a short period of time, with pathological findings of extensive glomerular crescence. On kidney biopsy, there is little complement and immunoglobulin, meaning a porcy immune glomerulonephritis. Porcy immune means there is only minimal immunoglobulin deposition on immunofluorescence. However, where a biopsy is not feasible, usually diagnosis is made on clinical findings and presence of ANCA or radiological findings. Management consists of an induction therapy followed by maintenance therapy. The medication used for both are immunosuppressants to dampen the immune system. For induction, steroids, cyclophosphamide, or rituximab are used. For maintenance therapy, azathioprine, mycophenolate, or rituximab for at least 12 to 24 months after stable remission has been achieved. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video on granulomatosis with polyangitis.